federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750 for folks who need immediate needs. A few moments later. Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas sounding the alarm on FEMA funding right after the devastation of Hurricane Helene. Listen. Uh, we do not have the funds, FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. Hurricane Helene just ended Kamala Harris's campaign. Uh, this comes after a bombshell announcement from the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas. So what we're going to do in this video is react to the corruption and exposing what's really happening. Let's start at the very beginning. Tonight, an unfolding catastrophe in Asheville, North Carolina. Homes and buildings swept away by raging floodwaters that have submerged the town. It's beyond anything I've ever seen in my lifetime. Parts of the town not underwater, completely cut off. Somebody on a Facebook post said something about having to fly out of Asheville because you can't drive out of Asheville. That extreme. Yeah. With no power, no cell service, crowds formed outside this hotel, one of the only places in town with working Wi-Fi. 6,300 National Guard troops racing to get aid to those in need, along with an army of volunteers. The death toll skyrocketing. At least 166 people killed across six states and hundreds of people still missing. And back here in North Carolina, dramatic dashboard camera footage Whoa. capturing this moment that a couple narrowly missed being swept up in a landslide in the Blue Ridge Mountain. Uh, let me just give you guys a couple of stats here I have on my screen, so I don't want to get this wrong. Currently today, the death toll is at 205. Uh, they're estimating that the economic damage right to the economy in that local area is north of 160 billion dollars uh the size of the hurricane covered over 800 miles and the storm caused record-breaking flooding which we've seen in the videos and eclipse and the power outages reached uh at least 690,000 homes uh given the catastrophe and the size of how damaging this has been to that area uh, this is the purpose of the video, why I truly believe this is going to negatively impact uh, Kamala Harris's campaign because of the responses and the corruption. And where we're going to start with the response is the current commander in chief. Loved ones waiting, not sure if their loved ones are OK and they can't contact them because there's no vacations. And his homes and businesses have washed away in an instant. I want them to know we're not leaving until the job is done. Many more folks this place with no idea when they'll be able to be returned to the home, if ever, if there's a home to return to. So we're keeping, our, we're keeping them all in our prayers and all the lives lost. And those particularly unaccounted for, there's nothing like wondering, is my husband, wife, son, daughter, mother, father alive? And many more who remain without electricity, water, food, and communications. And whose homes and businesses have washed away in an instant. I want them to know. We're not leaving until the job is done. I also want you to know, I'm committed to traveling to the impacted areas as soon as possible, but I've been told that it would be disruptive if I did it right now. We will not do that at the risk of diverting or delaying any, any of the response assets needed to deal with this crisis. My first responsibility is to get all the help needed to those impacted areas. And <clears throat> I expect to be there, <clears throat> excuse me, I have cold. I expect to be there later this week. Uh, this is the commander in chief. He's barely alive. The guy's coughing all over the place. Um, I mean, he started off the press conference, um, you know, like he was out of breath. Uh, and so that, I mean, does that really matter right now? No, but it's just a side note. I mean, geez, this is what we've come to as a country where we have someone like him still in charge. But hey, it doesn't really matter because if you thought what he was doing was ridiculous, look at Kamala Harris. I, she is just as fake as you can get. I, I I don't understand the photo op there. Why are you like, what is that? You know, you waiting for the cameras to roll to look like you're doing your job. You got your nice little crisis jacket on with the big logo. OK, sure. I, I'm sure that people believe you. And just optics wise, it, it looks weird. But hey, 
Let's give her the benefit of the doubt. Let's see what she had to say. I want to acknowledge and thank the first responders who have been extraordinary. Uh, having met with them, they are the kind of folks that are the heroes in moments of crisis who do extraordinary work that is about lifting up other people. As it relates in particular to the leaders who are here and doing that work, including the first responders, most of them, as it relates to the local folks, are folks who have personally and their families have personally experienced loss and devastation, and yet they leave their home, leave their family to go to centers like where I was earlier to do the work of helping perfect strangers. Can she just stick to the script? I don't know why she's speaking off script like this. Not during this time. Uh, I understand she's trying to be inspirational. I don't believe she is that type of person when it comes to uh, her public speaking skills. The president and I um, have been paying close attention from the beginning to um, what we need to do to make sure the federal resources hit the ground as quickly as possible. And the federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750 for folks who need immediate needs being met, such as food, baby formula, and the like. We know that $750 is really nothing if you're comparing it to how much money they just sent to Ukraine. We're, we're gonna get to that later in this video, but this was what she had to say. Now, let's see what former President Trump had to say who was first on the ground uh, and he showed up in Georgia and here's what he had to say. Homes, hospitals, highways and cars have been plunged underwater. Entire neighborhoods have been turned into lakes. Nobody's seen anything like it. And to every family that's been displaced here in Georgia and North Carolina, who's, which has really been hit, we were going there also and uh, they don't have communication. They don't have anything right now that there, we're trying to, I just spoke to Elon, I'm getting him, I want to, we want to get Starlink hooked up because they have no communication whatsoever. And Elon, Elon will always come through, we know that. So already Trump is saying exactly what he's going to do uh, to help in this situation, uh, collaborating with Elon Musk, who really doesn't have to do it, which you guys are going to find out later in this video why he really didn't have to do this, but he did. Uh, and it once again exposes the corruption from Kamala Harris, of course, and the leadership of this current administration. Uh, the individual who really, I would say, is probably going to be responsible for why Kamala Harris uh, will lose this election is the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas. Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas sounding the alarm on FEMA funding right after the devastation of Hurricane Helene. Listen. We are meeting the immediate needs uh, with the money that we have. We are expecting another hurricane hitting. Uh, we do not have the funds. FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. This all comes as the Biden-Harris administration spent over a billion dollars from a FEMA program on services for migrants. Talk about terrible timing. We're 30 days out from the election. Um, if they don't do what they're supposed to do, uh, this probably will be the end for her. And that would be a good thing because our country needs strong leadership. This is what weak leadership gets you. They spend more money and they have more compassion for illegal immigrants than they do for our own uh, American citizens and especially ones right now who are in such a terrible situation. Now, of course, this is uh, my opinion. Uh, let's watch a couple of clips that brings this point home of how bad it is. I want to ask you about um, what you've seen from FEMA on the ground. And I know that Americans are helping out right now, but uh, okay. is FEMA leading the effort? Are you seeing them on the ground delivering aid or is this on the backs of the American citizenry? Uh, no, actually the American people are the ones who are leading the efforts. Um, and so it, it, you, you can see now that there is a tremendous amount of people that's just stepped up. I've heard from others who said that they haven't heard or seen FEMA and so that's become a bit of a problem. And some of the other areas, which has only got helicopter accessibility, um, rotary wing only, it makes it even more difficult. And again, I, I want to apologize for the background noise and everything. We just landed to refuel. We're going to try and go back up and go out. But um, yeah, I, I, I haven't seen FEMA the entire time. And I've talked to many of the fire departments and they've had very little communication with them as well. 
Well, maybe FEMA should be less concerned about DEI, which is the number one priority of FEMA, and more concerned about delivering aid during crises like what's going on Amen, in Sean. Western North Carolina. Well, they, they are concerned with, uh, you know, delivering for a crisis, but it's the wrong one. They're delivering for the immigration crisis, the border crisis, right, in these sanctuary cities. That's where the money has been going, clearly. That's where the resources are at. I mean, how damaging is it for a congressman to go on to a major network and say that even local police department, fire department, the citizens um, have not made contact with FEMA um, that is terrible. Why is it that FEMA is the last on the scene? That's what I don't understand. I mean, that's why I call this a scandal, ladies and gentlemen, because in 2024, uh, speed is everything. And if you're telling me former President Trump and what he brought resources, Elon Musk and the Starlinks, uh, Corey Mills and the people he's been using privately to help people be rescued and things like that. They've been on the ground. They were there before FEMA. Oh, yeah, we got problems. Now, if you're getting value from this video, make sure you like, share and subscribe to our channel. If you want to support us further, go to the link in the description below. Grab yourself a T-shirt or buy us a cup of coffee. So this is a glimpse into the chaos that is happening right now on the ground, and we're just getting started, okay? Um, thank God that the fact that Elon Musk uh, donated a lot of his Starlinks, um, even when the government pretty much stiffed him on a government contract where he would have provided over 19,000 uh, Starlinks to FEMA. Yes, you heard that correctly, um, but it took Donald Trump to reach out to him to get that going. And let's look at a couple of tweets from Elon Musk on this exact issue. So here's the actual tweet where it's just really the bottom line to it. He writes, had the FCC not illegally revoked this SpaceX Starlink award, it would probably have saved lives in North Carolina. Lawfare costs lives. Now, why is that? Because earlier uh, there was this tweet that was released. North Carolina would have 19,522 working Starlink kits available today after Hurricane Helene had the FCC not revoked in bad faith the grant that was awarded to SpaceX as the winning bidder. So uh, Space, SpaceX bid on this government program. Uh, they won it. And then all of a sudden um, it was revoked. So here's like the list of all the states where uh, Starlink would be available uh, to be used from the federal government. So clearly that would trickle down to FEMA. Um, and uh, that that didn't happen. Elon Musk, he sends the Starlinks there. He makes it free. People don't have to pay. I mean, he's pretty much doing more than FEMA at this point. I mean, and that's not to be disrespectful to people who work for FEMA. I just don't believe FEMA is set up to be successful when you're diverting funds to the migrant crisis that shouldn't exist in the first place. All right, so let's go over the implications of this and how I believe this is going to uh, just end the election for her, just full stop. Number one, um, the federal government and FEMA, uh, which obviously stops at Kamala Harris's feet because she's running to be the next commander in chief. Um, they've been embarrassed with their failed response uh, because of politics. And what do I mean by that? Well, politics is what prevented uh, Starlinks from being available immediately. Politics have prevented from even private citizens and other people with resources from helping the local community and being obstructed uh, by FEMA and local authorities. The second thing is that voters feel forgotten. They don't feel like uh, that the federal government cares. And this is another Maui situation again. Um, and so this is bad timing uh, for the campaign. And this is why immigration can have negative impacts that you don't even see coming, right? Who thought that a hurricane would hit in this month, 30 days before the election, and then it's exposed that they've used almost a billion dollars on the migrant crisis, but they're struggling with uh, delivering resources, and now they're going to be short of money uh, in FEMA moving forward during the hurricane season. I mean, that is just crazy. Now, the one thing that isn't crazy that's actually great news is the GoFundMe that was set up when uh, former President Trump visited Georgia. This was set up the same day. Uh, and people have been donating and they're already up to four point seven million dollars. Uh, it's interesting how Donald Trump is literally uh, raising money. He's already halfway to whatever FEMA has done. Um, and so once again, uh, great for him, uh, bad for Kamala Harris. So there was a lot of information that we went through in this video. 
Uh, but I would just want to leave you guys with this. Uh, we got to bring common sense back. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Uh, when our fellow citizens are in trouble and a disaster strikes, um, it just isn't time uh, to play politics. And, and what I mean by that is, is that when you go back a few years ago and you treat Elon Musk the way that you've treated him, who clearly uh, knows what he's doing, who clearly knows how to get results, who clearly moves faster than the government, um, but you stiff him because you don't like him. I mean, that comes back to bite you in the you know what. So um, that's the biggest thing here. And when people don't feel uh, like they are being taken care of by the government, um, this is going to ruin uh, her campaign for sure, because uh, this is part of the administration that she's a part of. And people are going to blame someone and they're not going to blame former President Trump. You can't blame Trump for this one. Um, they're going to blame Joe Biden. And they're going to blame Kamala Harris. So that's my opinion. What do you guys think about this entire uh, Hurricane Helene story, the damage and the responses, um, local citizens taking matter to their own hands, FEMA uh, doing the craziness that they're doing, and then the amount of money that they spent on the migrant crisis, including now that uh, they're going to be short funds. I mean, what, what do you guys think about all that? Put your answers in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Stay grateful, stay focused, and stay true. Peace.